Hello, welcome to this channel. My name is Jesse and together with Diana, we are going to be sharing a few insights, a few things that have been dominating our conversations, things that can help us to become better in the area of family, specifically in parenting. So, Diana, what has been on your mind lately? <laughs> okay, so I've been thinking a lot about um, how we become adults and mm -hmm. how um, how we are actually not raising children, okay. but we are raising adults. Mm -hmm. Because um, I've seen that what happens to a child, what well, how an adult becomes, right, mm. is a lot influenced mm -hmm. by what happened when they were a child. child. Yeah. Okay. And a young child. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so how a child, how an adult behaves or how adults live out their lives yeah. is dependent on how they were programmed yeah. when they were still little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I even think, I've been thinking about, you know, there's this statement that people say that um, when somebody speaks, mm -hmm. you can tell which nursery school they went to. <laughs> now, you're talking about an adult, mm. how an adult speaks. And yes. you're saying you can tell which nursery school they went to, which okay. means that how they are speaking as an adult mm. is influenced, has been influenced mm. by where they went to school okay. in kindergarten, mm -hmm. not at university, yes, not in secondary, but in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So that those years yes. are so crucial. Okay. Yeah. So what we do with children now will determine how they turn out yeah. when they are adults. Yeah. Okay. And you see now when the kids are so young, it's mm. easy to rubbish them, eh? mm -hmm. like to just dismiss them and think they are not understanding or they will forget, yes. things like that. But yes. now I realize that I have so many memories mm. of when I was Ruby's age and Ruby's five. Mm -hmm. And so when I think that, uh, like I can dismiss it, yes. I shouldn't because when she's 30, she's going to be remembering these things which I think mm -hmm. are not big deals. Yes now mm. yeah okay so that it matters mm. a lot <laughs> <laughs> not a little but a lot a lot okay so eh i have woken up yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like i don't i don't um you know just go over things anymore yes yeah okay i'm so, more careful okay mm. so when we are thinking of how to you know put this across we said we therefore call this raising responsible adults yeah and really where that comes from is that the children that you have in your hands today or that you have in your house today, when we are talking about raising responsible adults, we are saying don't look at them as the children they are today, look at them as the adults they will be tomorrow. Yeah. And now that we are saying raising responsible adults, let us begin to think about some of the things we can do now in order for us to raise responsible adults tomorrow. Yeah. You mentioned something to the effect that the way you were raised as a child yeah. determines three things. Uh -huh. Tell me, <laughs> you talked about running the home. Yes, so that um, how, like just automatically yes. and naturally, how I run this home mm -hmm. is the way I saw how the home was being run when I was a child. Yes. You know, no matter how many YouTube videos I watch mm -hmm. and what, I mean, they can have an influence here and there, yes. but just naturally what I will be doing mm. is influenced by what I saw. So imagine if I had had a bad picture, Okay. what chaos would be here, yes. <laughs> you get. Uh, so now I realize that, I mean, you could go to all the nice schools and yes. what, but what did you see mm. at, at home? home? Yes, and then when I, when I think about almost everything that I know, mm -hmm. it's not what I learned at school, yes. but it's what I saw at home, home, okay. home, home, yes. nowhere else. So how I relate with people, how I treat visitors, yes. you know, that kind of thing, how I raise the children, what yes. I do with them, mm -hmm. where we go, yes. how we go there, mm -hmm. is about what happened to me when I was a child. Mm. Yeah. And now when you think about and how... And even you. Yes. <laughs> I did with you, so. Okay. Yeah. True. So when you think about how we look for the best schools for our children, we pay this hefty amount of school fees. And by the way, we need to invest in good education for our children. We need to take them to good schools. But let's remember that school cannot replace home. 
Yeah. Home has its place and school has its place. Yeah. And I think to a greater extent, the best thing would be for school to only add on and emphasize on what is already happening at home. Yeah. Because for some reason, it is home. Everything, like we say, charity begins at home. Everything begins at the foundation, which is home. So we cannot delegate what is supposed to be happening at home to the school. You can't, even if you want, even if you try, it will not happen. Yes. Yeah. Even if you try, even if you say maybe my child is going to learn how to pray at yes. school, they will learn how, maybe they will learn how to pray at school, but mm -hmm. it will be like prayer is a school thing. Mm -hmm. Like we pray when we're at school, yes. but it's not normal life. Yes. You know, like it's not an, the normal thing of when I'm an adult, I will wake up in the morning and I will mm -hmm. pray. And before I go to sleep at night, I will pray with my family. Why? Yes. Because you didn't see that. Mm -hmm. It was a school thing. Yes. So, but if school was not praying mm -hmm. but at home it was the routine yes. then even when you grow up an ad as an adult you mm -hmm. know that um when people when people wake up in the morning mm -hmm. they read their bibles yes because you saw it being done so at it's home. like naturally mm -hmm. that's what people do yes if um at home if at school they pray mm -hmm. before the, before lunch mm -hmm. but at home they don't mm -hmm. you will that thing will stop at school yeah and when you have your own home you will just eat the food very true. Yeah. Yes, so how you run your home depends on how you saw your parents running the home. Yeah. How you raise your children will determine how, I mean, how you were raised will determine how you raise your own children. Yeah. How you treat your spouse will determine how you saw your parents treating each other. Yeah. So literally, home is where everything begins. Oftentimes, when I'm invited to speak to audiences, uh, specifically on the subject of parenting, I like to say that you are a good mother because you had a great mother yeah tell us a little bit more about that like what are some of the attributes that you have now picked you you picked in your parenting in the way you were raised that mm -hmm. you are applying in your own journey of parenting okay i think maybe one thing is i don't remember um other people i remember my mom being present even my yeah. dad being very present doing things with us when we would go out they were mm -hmm. the ones who were there mm -hmm. um it was not that we've gone out and we are somewhere with a maid yeah and they are talking to the big people mm. <laughs> they were with us <laughs> yes um so they were involved we would cook together mm. we would play games together yeah. watch tv together mm. so for me naturally that's i cannot not do it yes even I can't, I can't do, I can't do the other way. Yes, like I just, you are wired to yeah, just do that. Yeah. If, yeah. if, if let's say there's a place that we are going and maybe I know that I can't manage the kids, mm. I would rather not go. Okay. So you'd rather not go than leave the children at home? Yes, and yeah. either leave them at home or have to have them be there and yeah. someone else is taking care because I don't want to be disturbed mm. like I, I can't do it yeah yeah so things things like that yes yeah okay yeah and i think it's a good thing because even for me now i've also caught up you yeah. know <laughs> you are catching yeah, up yeah i'm catching up you know <laughs> so sometimes I mean, when we are even, going somewhere even like the other day when i had you telling them the story yes I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Now <laughs> tell stories, you know, we read a book and... Really and you animate, animate and dramatize. Story. <laughs> I yeah. was like, what's going on? <laughs> so these are things I didn't grow up seeing, but thankfully there is a place for us to learn yeah. some of these things. If you are intentional about it, yeah. I think there is a place for us to be intentional and to be deliberate and yeah. purposeful. And humble. And humble, And yes. humble enough to say that I can learn yes. and I can do it. It's not like those are not my things to do i didn't grow up seeing them so i will not do them yeah but to say let me come down mm -hmm. and be willing to learn these things yes yeah. yes you did mention something about your parents being present and mm. uh, perhaps i just wanted to say that uh, your parents we are very busy people yeah really they busy. Had busy jobs okay. busy jobs sometimes would even take them away from the country yeah the case of your dad for example yeah. but i think one thing that i appreciated is that when he was around he was around, Two you know, around. So, <laughs> so it's not just about, sometimes it's not about quantity, it's yeah. about quality. Yeah. So yes, you are there. Sometimes parents who are present are some of the most absent parents, you know. Yeah. Yes, you're there, but you're actually not there mm. because you're there, you're, you know, on your phone, on your computer, or you're on the TV, you're reading your newspaper, and whenever they come, say, don't disturb me, you first go and play. So yes, you are physically present, and yet you are 
in a, in essence you are absent from them because you are there but you're not there so yeah yeah, and I think for me another thing that I've realized also is that when they are young, they can really stress you and you, they can really tire you. They yeah. want to do this, they're climbing here, they're what? But um, I've realized that they're not going to be young forever. They're going to be young for a short time. Mm -hmm. So let me allow and go through it and be present yes. because when they are older yes. and they have been trained to be responsible, to be disciplined, yes. They will fly. They will go they will and go. they will be on their own and they will be able to mm. thrive wherever they are. I yes. won't have to be worried about them yes. rather than leaving them to their own way now when they are young mm. and they can't figure out, you know, how to live. And mm. then when they are older, I still have to worry about them because they can't make the right decisions. Yes. And so then I'm not, you know, now I'm a slave when I'm older. Yes. So I would rather go through this for this short time because they're going to be adults true. longer than they will be children. Very true. And so then i will be resting yes knowing that wherever they are they, they, are, fine. they are okay yeah you yeah. did your part yeah i know that i know that they are okay and i've seen that i mean in in adults yes yeah in adults now yeah. who mm. um you know were raised well yeah and now you know they are on their own yeah as opposed to being you know not not raised so well mm. and then they grow up and they are a problem to their parents yes. so i don't want to have that problem <laughs> True. Yeah. And uh, I think, as you said that, I just reminded, remembered something that perhaps when you make that sacrifice of, you know, holding back and attending to your children, I think God honors that commitment. Because for most people who have had to put a hold on certain things, when the children are slightly older and they plug back into either their careers or something, yeah. somehow there is a way they move on. Eh? And yeah. You know, you're thinking uh, while others were moving up the ladder, they were at home or rather they were a bit slow on their professional career lives. But when they get back into the active thing again, man, they have the way they it's skyrocket. True. Recently, I met a lady and she's been homeschooling her children for I don't know how many years, but like her oldest is like maybe 18 mm -hmm. and she's been doing it the whole time. Yes. She started working maybe two years ago. Mm. And it, like she just stepped into her career, mm. and she was appointed a principal of an international school. Wow! And she, wow. so she, when she was given the position, she yes. felt like, my goodness, this like is... I've not been working yes. for like twenty years, yes. and they're making me a principal. Yes. Yeah. So do not feel guilty to make a sacrifice for your children. They are not young forever. Yeah. The other thing that I think is important is perhaps that speaks into the place of knowing where you are right now. So yeah. if you have uh, young children, you may not be the one to be involved in everything. Yeah. Yeah. There is a place for you to say no because sometimes you're, you're, you're doing all these other things with people whose children have moved on. Yeah. So you are also there. You want to be all over the place. Please, please yeah. know yourself, <laughs> know where you are, know yeah. your situation, yeah. know your season. There is a time. This is the, if you have young children, they really need you. So mm. this is the time for you to give your family as your first ministry yeah. give them your best because you could go around you know doing everything with other people and then you end up losing your own children yeah and then what use will that really have been yeah. so know your season it's time for you to be closer to them when they get older you will the lights will be green you can go wherever you want to go yeah yeah but i think also knowing your values that you might be um with people who are like you have children you're, yeah. you you know the same age as yours and they are doing all these things and you're wondering eh, how are these people able to do, do all everything things. else yes. while having young children and for me i feel like i can't do anything uh, else mm. but to know that people have different values oh, yes. and so if if they have chosen to do things a certain way yes. like be okay yeah yeah be okay to say that okay i mean this is the life i've chosen i know i have chosen it sure. um you know let me let other people do what yeah, yeah know that know what your values are yeah. and know you know i'm going to be able to do this for this this amount of time and sure. then things will change later stick to it and don't compare or compromise your values for the sake of others great so in the next video we shall be talking about some of the things we can do specifically and intentionally to raise responsible adults remember that those gifts are not yours those children are gifts from God. They are not yours. So you are raising God's children on his behalf. He has just entrusted them to you for a certain period of time. So do your best while you're still at it. It's been me, Jesse and Diana, talking about raising responsible adults. 
See you in the next video as we talk about more things, more nuggets, some tips and practical helps that can empower us to become better at this game that God has entrusted us with. Thank you for watching.